Hello there and welcome back to The Disconnected. It has been a while since I did my last installment in this series and tonight you are finally getting part 7 in my boutique labels that I collect and so should you. The last time we did this just to round it up, I ended up in alphabetical order at twilight time which means first one up is going to be... Umbrella Entertainment, and they have a few lines going for them. The first line from Umbrella Entertainment that I wanted to bring up tonight was their Beyond Genres. Now this line has a lot of great titles in it. This is Bad Boy Bubby. They also have Reanimator. They also have Psycho Gorman, Possession, lots of classics, big names that people will recognize, and they go above and beyond. They have a good packaging. They have a nice slipcover on all of them. Really good special features. A lot of them are archival. Most of them are not brand new. And this just gives a new way for people in Australia to get these great releases. And most of the time, they have been region free. Now that's not a guarantee that they will all be region free, but a lot of them have been. The next line from Umbrella to talk about is their Ozploitation Classics, and this is Nightmares, a really great movie that I'm so glad they put out. This is the best release of this movie so far, by a long shot. And this is just one of many that they've put out. This line includes really great titles like The Man from Hong Kong, amongst many others, and they are doing just really good work overall. Now, Umbrella also has their Sunburnt Cinema line. I don't have any of those releases yet, but it is just another style of releases that they've gone with. They also have all kinds of titles that don't get any of the special lines like this. Uh, for example, just recently they put out the 1990s hit classic, the Super Mario Brothers, with the work print involved for the very first time. So after Umbrella Entertainment, we have one of my personal favorites, and that is Unearthed Films. Unearthed Films is known for doing some of the more, uh, shall we say, depraved titles. They are generally more brutal, gory, uh, not for the faint of heart style movies, and they have gone across the entire spectrum from Serbia through trash southern cinema of the U.S., and let's share some of the lines that they have right now. So the first thing they've been doing is just releasing titles. So this is Brutal. This is one of their just regular uh, Blu-ray releases. Nothing crazy to go with it. It's just a really over-the-top, gory Asian film. They are one of the only companies putting out titles like this. So I'm so glad that they are putting time into things like this and the movie Dis, and so many others. A few years back, indie horror filmmaker Ryan Nicholson passed away, and Unearthed Films has been releasing his titles posthumously. So this is Hanger, one of the more uh, gross movies. Uh, a lot of people love this one. I, it's funny in parts, I'm not a huge fan, but they do a really good job with his movies with tons of special features. This has some really good special features showing how Lloyd Kaufman came and was a part of this filming in a rather... Uh, Lloyd Kaufman-esque role, actually. Next up is when their regular, gory, over-the-top, brutal movies are not enough, they have a line of cinema that they are putting out called Too Extreme for Mainstream. Now, they've only put out about three of these so far. This is the first one. This is Torment. This is a movie inspired by the John Wayne Gacy killings, and let's just say it is hard to watch. Uh... I'm not going to go into too many details because that will be a video I will regret. But they are really good releases. They go in a good depth. They generally come with a poster. Now I will say with these, they generally say that they are uh, exclusive to the Unearthed Film site. But so far, you've been able to buy each of them on Diabolic and Grindhouse Video as well. So don't feel like you're hamstrung into only purchasing from their site and only within those first 30 days unless they change something in the future. Uh, so far, there is no indication that that will be changing. Next from Unearthed Films is their line, Unearthed Classics, and this is my favorite release from that line so far, and that is The Untold Story. This is a ridiculously great movie, but this line overall, it seems to be just for titles that genuinely have a great reputation behind it. But this is still over the top, super exploitative, but a really good release from Unearthed Films. Not only is this movie great, but it has some incredible special features, including an interview with Rick Baker, but most importantly on this disc is a documentary on Cat 3 filmmaking in Hong Kong that is just really well done, and I hope more people pick this up, primarily to see that documentary, especially now that Cat 3 titles are getting more and more widespread. Next label to discuss is VCI Entertainment. VCI Entertainment is one of the lowest tier boutique labels, in my opinion. 
They get some decent titles. For example, they have John Carpenter's first film, Dark Star. I don't know how they got this title, but they did. Um, the releases that they put out are fairly subpar. A lot of their titles are on burned discs, but they are officially released by the label. They're just uh, printed on demand. They are not printing a thousand at once, so they're not able to meet the required print run. Thankfully, this is actually a press disc, but I think that a better company could have done a lot better with some of these releases. The next one I wanted to highlight from them is one of their most recent releases, and that is one of the acclaimed uh, video nasties from the 1980s from the UK, and that is Night of the Bloody Apes. This is one that came with a slipcover from them, which is rather odd. Uh, it's interesting that they put this out, but it just looks like they were able to acquire the rights and release it. And because it is a video nasty, a lot more people have picked it up than some of their other releases. Now, VCI is actually known for putting out a lot of other titles that many other labels would never put out, which is why I have a number of releases from them. And some of them are like classic Mexican horror films that just don't have a home anywhere else. Overall, they have a, a really odd catalog, but if you are interested in something like that or just broadening your horizons, they might be one to check out. Next up is an interesting one because technically this may not actually be a boutique label because this is put out by the studio, but it's one that I wanted to shine a light on still, and that is Warner Archive. So they have all of the classic Warner studio catalog titles. This is The Man With Two Brains for something like this. We are able to get a release of a movie that we might not get at any other time. So we have a classic Steve Martin film. But then they also put out things that were sometimes made for television, like Bad Ronald, one of my favorites from their catalog. And uh, the, yeah, this was a made-for-TV film that is quite tame, but overall pretty creepy still. And then with Warner, they also have a long history of putting out animation. So we were able to get things like the Tex Avery Screwball Classics. Longtime viewers of the channel know that I love animation and they have continued to put out some really good archive animation titles that we were not getting anywhere else on Blu-ray. So I'm stoked that they are continuing that tradition. Now Warner Archive has gone through some changes over the last couple of years. One of the main people looking over their physical media distribution was either fired or walked away from the company for a short period of time. And during that time when he left, they moved all of their operations from at Warner Archive and distributing from there. They are now being distributed solely through Amazon, which I don't love. Uh, one of the things that we've lost in that transition is they used to have four for $44 sales, and those are no more. But in the meantime, we've been able to see titles go as low as about $8, which is even better than four for 44 But I really don't want to support Amazon, so there's always an upside and a downside of that one. The gentleman that was fired or walked away, whatever the story was, he is back and he is making it known that he is focusing on physical media in a big way and wanting to do right by the fans. Now with these releases, some of them have really good special features, but a lot of them are just completely bare bones. Now there have been some misinformation passed over the last couple of years. Warner Archive titles that are on Blu-ray are always pressed discs. They are not made on demand titles, they are not burned discs. However, some of their DVD lines have been made-on-demand titles. One of their biggest titles is Gummo, and even that one came on a made-on-demand burned disc. But it came officially from Warner Archive. They just made it in-house, burning it on demand. All right, the last company in my walk-through alphabetical way that I have a portion of this room organized by is Wellgo USA. Now, Wellgo USA has a wide variety of titles ranging from things like Burning or The Wailing, uh, some very good Asian cinema. They have like a lot of Donnie Yen titles, they have It Man, they have Raging Fire, um, just a slew of really good Asian titles. And then they also have things like modern horror films. They have titles like The Endless that has been pretty well known for the last few years and a lot of people have picked it up through them. They even have some classic horror titles like Phantasm, which they released in a really nicely made steelbook a few years back. And then they also just recently put out the Phantasm 1 and 2 double pack that were both remastered. They kind of flubbed that release, but they brought it back with some replacement discs. So like I said, that was the last title in my arrangement of alphabetical order, but some other labels that I did not have releases for previously, I actually have some now. So I wanted to go through some of the other labels that I've scattered across the room because I have been an unorganized fool who is running out of room quite quickly. So the first one to highlight for my scattered across the room labels is Garage House Pictures. One of the lines they're best known for is Trailer Trauma, which is a set of movie trailers. They've done a lot of different eras, and this is the first one, but I believe they've put out four or five of these. And there had been rumors that they were working on another one, but Garage House Pictures may be no more. Uh, we haven't heard anything from them for well over a year, 
and that's never a good sign, obviously. Garage House Pictures has also put out some other titles, just full-length movies. For example, they have Weirdo, The Beginning. This is an Andy Milligan film that they put out, and this is one of two of their titles that came with the slipcover, and those slips got very rare very quickly. Uh, unfortunately, it seems like you're not going to be able to buy these anytime soon, because they're just gone. The next label to bring up is one that I just got my first title from, and that is Grasshopper Films. This is Hill of Freedom, a film by Hong Sang Soo. Uh, it seems to me that they mostly dabble in Asian cinema, which a lot of labels do, and that's great because we need a lot more Asian cinema put out. And they are very quiet. They don't release a ton of features, but when they do, they don't seem to be noticed by a lot of people. So I'm very happy to be shining a light on them. And they do have some important titles on the way, like Days is coming. The next one is, again, not technically a boutique label because it is straight from the studio, but I wanted to show Paramount Presents. Paramount Presents is a line that started, I believe, in 2020 and is continuing up to at least today. They have one more future title announced at the moment, and all of these titles have this interesting slipcase that comes with this fold-out uh, poster for the film and then just a regular Blu-ray case on the inside. Yeah. Many of these have 4K scans, but they are not getting 4K UHD releases. So that is something that we might be looking forward to in the future. Uh, there was a recent article in Rolling Stone that indicated that they are planning on releasing some of them in 4K. It appears each of these style releases has had a print run of 6,000, and some of them have gone out of print, which is interesting. Next up is yet another label that's technically not a boutique, because it's coming straight from the studio, and that is Vestron Video. Now a lot of people are going to be quick to jump up and say, but they are a boutique label, now, they are boutique-styled releases. I mean, they have spine numbers, they have slipcovers on all of their releases, they have decent special features usually, but Vestron is owned by Lionsgate, and Lionsgate owns all of the rights to their own films, obviously. So when they are putting these out, they are not paying a license to restore these films. They are not paying a license to put these films on discs. Vestron Video is a pretty good company. Their first 19 or so releases were pretty expensive, but they all were really good, really well-known titles like Maximum Overdrive, like the Waxwork titles, like Chopping Mall, but unfortunately, their last handful of releases have not had great transfers. So I'm hoping we're able to find a balance between that cost that is super low and maybe finding better transfers for some of these releases because uh, things like Little Monsters just did not look great at all. The next one is a label that I just recently got my first two releases from, and that is Flickr Alley. Flickr Alley primarily goes into the very classic cinema, like the 1920s and 30s. A lot of them are still silent films, and they do really good work. Unfortunately, they are generally very overpriced. I would pay attention when purchasing these. See if you can pick something up in like a buy two, get one free sale, because otherwise these are on sale even, still like $30 to $35, which is quite steep for a boutique. The next one I wanted to show is The Film Detective. Now, The Film Detective has put out quite a number of releases, and I honestly don't know a whole lot about them. I will be looking more into them this year, but the one release I have from them is The Other Side of Madness about Charles Manson. Uh, again, not a whole lot of information, but wanted to make sure that they made the list. Another one that I don't personally know a lot of information about, but one that needs to be on the list is Media Blasters. Media Blasters has been making a big name for themselves because they've been releasing more and more titles over the last year. They're restoring a lot of classic like cult titles with brand new 4K scans and putting out very good releases. So Media Blasters is certainly one to keep an eye on. One from the UK to watch out for is Second Run. Second Run puts out a lot of art house style films. This is Beauty and the Beast, a Czech film that you might recognize the director from uh, the Criterion release of The Cremator. They have done quite a lot of great releases through Second Run and they do very uh, Criterion and even a little more art housey style films very often. All right, a lot of these other ones are going to be independent or they are going to be premium style releases. So the first one I want to bring up is SOV Horror. This is a very independent shot on video uh, label, as you can tell by the name, SOV Horror. They really do 90 shot on video style horror films and they are uh, on sale quite often for li as little as like $8. Just pay attention to their website. They are generally what you would expect from shot on video films. Next one I wanted to show is a Baroque house. This is a more indie style, very disturbing film type. They would fit well from the two extreme for mainstream titles from Unearthed Films. Now, a Baroque house has been going through some problems over the last couple of years. So they might be either changing their name or changing where they're hosting or uh, shuttering altogether. So 
Pay attention to them and you can look out for their titles if you are looking for something on the depraved side. Now some premiums. Uh, in previous videos I've mentioned Zavi. Zavi is kind of a piece of junk, but sometimes they license some really interesting releases. This is one that I had to get. This is the It and It Chapter 2 double feature steelbook box set release that is, in my opinion, really well done. Zavi was the only place that you could buy this from in the entire world, so had to import it from them. It was Zavi UK only, but it is a pretty good release overall. Next is a giant 4K lenticular box set of Dunkirk from the UHD Club. As their name would suggest, they are typically putting out 4K titles in these very big, uh, overall deluxe packaging style releases. And as you can see here, they come with all kinds of stuff on the inside. The next one is from a boutique label called M Life, And M Life puts out things like this, the Conjuring and Conjuring 2 double feature box set that is just stunning to look at. They have a lot of other really good titles like they did The Lighthouse and it sold out very quickly. If you're looking to get into titles like this from M Life or some of these other premiums, you're probably going to want to get into a group buy. And I will be listing a couple of the common sites to use for group buys in the description below. And finally, to close this all out, I have some steelbook companies and some media book companies that I wanted to shine a light on. The first is Mondo. Mondo is an art company and they have licensed their art to, uh, at this point, a little over 50 titles that are coming out in steelbook all across the world. They are generally sold in one or two places at most and it can be a pain in the ass to track them all down. But this is Friday the 13th. They have done a lot of great other titles like Ex Machina, Boyhood, and they are still putting titles out. I just got the last four in the last week. The next title is a German company and that is NSM Records. This is the Midnight Meat Train, one of my favorite horror movies from the 2000s and one that does not get enough love. I hope more people check out NSM Records because they do some really good stuff. One that I'm excited to see what comes next from them is Crescendo House. This is Labyrinth of Cinema, and this is their first release. This just came out in 2021, and there is no indication of a second release, but from what I hear, they are working hard on it. And this steelbook is beautiful. Just take a look at some of these pictures. Now into some media books. This is the German label, Cook Films, K-O-C-H. And this is where they put out Troll, Troll 2, and of course, the best worst movie ever, all into one package. Now, if you don't know, Media Books generally is a digipack style release with some printed uh, stories connected all together on the inside. I love Media Books, and there's some really great art styles out there on some of these. This next one, I've not been able to find a lot of information on, but they are, as far as I can tell, just called 84. This is the entire From Dust Till Dawn trilogy, and it is a padded Media Book, and it is so, so nice. Uh, if you're looking for more like this, you can check Diabolic. There's a, quite a few overseas websites. There are no current distributors in the U.S. selling media books at all, as far as I can tell. The last media book company I wanted to shine a light on is called Nameless. They are also from Germany, and this is the 1990s Night of the Living Dead, and it is just really well done. They put out a lot of interesting titles, and uh, again, I just love media books. If you want more information on media books, maybe a whole video on them, please let me know in the comments below. All right, again, I know that was a long video, but thanks for watching the seventh installment of boutique labels that I collect, and so should you. I've got one more coming, and the only thing that that one is going to cover is Vinegar Syndrome and all of their partner labels all in one. So be on the lookout for that soon. In the meantime, as I always say, from one collector to all of you, have a good night. that would fit well with the two extreme for mainstream titles from Earn Un...